the time of his discovery, Thompson was a professor at England's University of Cambridge. He was using a device called a Crookes tube in his experiments. I happen to have here a little apparatus that's uh, akin to the one that J.J. Thompson used in 1897. It's called a cathode ray tube, just an evacuated little glass cylinder with some electrodes. And we can hook this up and uh, show the key points of his experiment. A replica of the first CRT. Yeah. It's the first cathode ray tube. It's ancestor of the television tube, as a matter of fact. You do the last one, and we should get a stream of cathode rays or electrons going there, and it'll show up. A few of them bang into this phosphor-coated piece of cardboard there. Here, I'll give you a magnetic field you can use to deflect the electrons. When Thompson exposed the stream of cathode rays to a magnet, the stream would bend. Since magnets can only affect matter, this meant the stream of rays was composed of some kind of electrically charged substance called radiant matter. After many hours of observing and measuring, Thompson realized he'd found the first subatomic particles. The ray was a stream of electrons. It was a revolutionary discovery. Some years later, a student of Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, was able to show that the positive charge in atoms, which was, of course had to be there to balance the negative charges of these little electrons that were scooting around, was localized in a tiny, tiny nucleus, uh, 100,000 times smaller than the size of the atom. And so almost all the mass was, of course, in that nucleus as well, because electrons are so light. And that's still the model we have today, right? That's the basic model for atoms, and of course the key to understanding everything involving atoms. Like chemistry. Like chemistry in particular, that's right. Scientists were just beginning to discover the anatomy of the atom. Now they wanted to understand its behavior. Specifically, the mechanism that enabled the atoms of certain elements to combine with the atoms of other elements to form new substances. In the early 1900s, American chemist Gilbert Lewis developed a model of the atom that provided an answer. It is he who explained that electrons in atoms, and chemistry is about electrons, it's not about nuclei, that the electrons in atoms went in shells around the nucleus. In Lewis's model of the atom, each shell allows only a maximum number of electrons. Lewis theorized that two chemical elements might combine to form a compound when they give up or accept electrons from their outer shells. For example, on their own, Sodium and chlorine are hazardous. But when a single sodium atom gives up the electron from its outer shell, and a single chlorine atom's outer shell accepts it, this exchange allows the two to bond and form the compound sodium chloride, table salt. Gilbert Lewis's theory was an extraordinary breakthrough. It enabled scientists to begin making chemical compounds, millions of them compounds that have shaped the face of modern life. Our next great discovery started in the 1890s with the discovery of an unknown radiation called X-rays. It caused a sensation, and scientists immediately began looking for other substances that emitted strange perhaps valuable forms of radiation. Over the next several decades, a number of scientists investigated the phenomena and together ended up shedding light on one of the great scientific sleuthing episodes of modern science. French physicist Henri Becquerel made the first significant breakthrough. In 1896, he conducted a series of experiments to see if various minerals emitted radiation. 
One of the minerals he happened to test was uranium. Becquerel's technique was to place different objects on top of an unexposed photographic plate, still wrapped in protective black paper. He would sprinkle the uranium onto another piece of black paper, then enclose the object between the uranium and the photographic plate. Later, Becquerel would develop the plate, and without fail, a ghostly photographic outline of the object would appear. From these experiments, Becquerel was able to prove conclusively that he had found a source for the mysterious radioactive rays that everyone was looking for. That source was uranium. From Becquerel, the investigation of radioactivity was taken up by Marie Curie. Curie and her husband Pierre undertook the job of isolating whatever elements were responsible for the radioactivity in uranium ore. For two years, the Curies boiled, sifted, filtered, and processed several tons of uranium ore. Finally, they succeeded in isolating two new elements contained in the ore, which they called polonium and radium. Marie Curie concluded that radium was a million times more radioactive than uranium. More importantly, she determined that the mysterious form of energy which enabled radioactivity to penetrate other materials was not the result of a chemical process, but seemed to be atomic in nature. Unfortunately, her discoveries came at great cost. The dangers of being exposed to radioactivity were still unknown at the time, and in 1934, Marie Curie died of leukemia, believed to have been caused by radiation poisoning. Even the notebooks that she used to record her observations are still considered too radioactive to handle. It was the atomic nature of radioactivity that eventually attracted the interest of physicist Ernest Rutherford, whom we already met in the discovery of the electron. Rutherford found that radioactive material goes through a natural process of decay. As it moves through the process, the radioactivity spontaneously emits unstable and highly charged energy particles with the power to penetrate matter. Rutherford called them alpha and beta particles and gamma rays. Since those discoveries, we've learned a lot about radioactivity, the dangers as well as the benefits. Radioactivity has given us medical imaging, a treatment for tumors, a method for calculating the age of the Earth, and a power source for our spacecraft to explore the solar system. Even some smoke detectors contain a small amount of radioactive material called americium, which helps create a steady electrical current. When smoke particles disrupt that current, it triggers the alarm. Centuries ago, alchemists set their sights high. They sought infinite wealth and immortality through miraculous transformations of matter. They came up with useful tools and glassware, but not much else. Chemists, on the other hand, set their sights a bit lower and ended up changing the look and feel of the material world, as did our next great discovery.